Heritage on RFD TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319 362 3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. We started this project with uh, the landowner had uh, two basic goals. One is that he wanted to use material from his land to uh, to build his, he's going to build a timber frame barn and he's going to build a small cabin, cabin actually right uh, in the spot I'm standing here. And uh, because of the remoteness, um, it just made sense to cut the timber here and process it here so that he could work on that project. And uh, we're gonna be involved in that um, throughout too. What I'm trying to do as we're cutting is I'm trying to balance his, his building needs and the materials he needs for that along with um, keeping a balance in the forest and, and trying to maintain what he's got here. And uh, he's got some fantastic uh, white pine. Um, from a forestry standpoint, I want to leave some, some white pine here, some of the big majestic white pines for seed. It's got good genetics. The other is, is we want to open it up so there's enough sun so we can get some white pine to grow and get more diversity in our, in our young stock. This is the ultimate in low impact and lessening your footprint. One is we're using the horses to the log, so that has minimal damage compared to anything else. We're not using gas, you know, there's, there's all kinds of reasons for horses. Second is we're sawing on site. It just makes sense that if you can process it on site, you're dropping your transportation costs, lessening your footprint. And what's even better than that is when you saw it on site and then you build something out of it, which is what we plan to do here. So. Um, this is about as efficient a use of materials as you're ever going to get right here. Come on, Trav! G! 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 Come on! Good boy, Trav! Come on! Come on! Good boy, Travis. I'm Tim Lamar. Um, I'm working with Tim Carroll with Cedar River Horse Logging, and I'm running his sawmill on this, uh, this whole operation this week. Uh, learning as I go, I shall say. Over here, if we pan over this way, you can see that this is where the landing, we call it, where the horses come in. The horses will come in from this direction and sweep all the way in here and then we've dropped off the logs and rolled them off to this side. Step up a little. Oh. The log that I'm going to put in the mill is this one right here. It has a very big bell. We're going to have some waste on the bell because you can't really use that much. The bell is what's, what this, you have the really cylindrical log and then it goes out at the base. That's the part where you really can't do a whole lot with. But uh, we're going to try and get as many boards out of that log as we possibly can. And then we're going to set it, I'm going to pick it up with a forklift and set it over here on in, in the mill, and then once I get it in the mill, I'll position it for the best cutting. 
Over here by the mill, when we take the logs, the lumber off of the mill, I bring it over here and I position my, my lumber pile in a strategic place so I don't have to do a whole lot of walking. Cuts down on time and effort. What I've got here is some 2 by material and some 6x6, six 2x6, by six, by six, and then basically a whole bunch of different dimensions. What we're cutting is a lot of barn boards. So various widths and as long as we can get them. Um, we're trying, we're shooting for 17 feet, but sometimes because of the sweep of the log, you don't get quite 17 feet. But I've got a number of widths laid out here, 8 inches, uh, 6 inches, and 5 inches, and I think there's one or two fours down there. Um, but that's basically what I'm doing, setting it in different stacks so I can keep all of the, dip, the same widths together. And then I'll measure it all up at the end of the day. There you go. Winter logging. Um, well, first of all, it's a lot more comfortable for us and the horses with, rather than doing it in the summer. It's just too hot, too many bugs and everything else. But winter, I mean, it, it's, it's nice because the ground is frozen. Um, I'm working in a t-shirt. I got a polypropylene uh, long underwear top on, which I'm about ready to shed. The temperature out here is about the upper 20s, I would say. Um, I'm in a t-shirt because I'm working. You should see the guy that's holding the camera. He's got everything on. So. It's just nice out here when it's, when it's a little cooler. The log that I'm gonna put in the mill is this one right here. I'm gonna pick it up with a forklift and set it in the mill. And then once I get it in the mill, I'll position it for the best cutting. Now that I got it setting in here, now I have to assess is it laying in here parallel with the wall with the uh, rails of the saw? And as you can see, no, it's not. So I gotta do some jimmying on the log to get it in the right spot. The other thing I'm looking for, if you step all the way over to the side over here, <clears throat> is how much sweep is there in the log. Now you can see that bell that we talked about earlier, it's up on top of that 8x8 on the far left and it's not even touching the two center 8x8s. That might be a problem when we saw down through a little bit and uh, it might bow. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do is bring the forklift back in here, pick that log back up and slide that 8x8 in to get it past the bell. That way it'll be more solid. In it where it's sitting. So here we go again.
Now you can see it's much better. Now we'll come back over here and get a look, get away from it. See if that's where we want it. You can see it's not quite parallel. Come and step right here. It's not quite parallel between the bars. So I got to move this front end to the left just a little bit. I try to get it as close as I can. The real test is after I get it all lowered and start to saw and see where the saw blade runs on it. Then we'll take the saw without it running and we'll see how close the blade is to the log and then we can adjust it a little bit more for the taper of the log. Now we're going to see, we're going to check it out, make sure that's running straight. It's probably not, so I'm going to have to adjust the log again. I got it laid in there straight, did a little bit of opening face, so now I can just trim that up just a little bit and then bring it down and then I can start getting lumber out of it.
one inch step. Easy girl. Oh! It's uh, done as I'm going to be putting down underneath here. Yeah. And I cut it mostly in two inches so that it can stack it. Good. And then when we get it up a little higher, I probably want to use some more dunnage to separate the stacks a little bit. Yep. That looks great. Some of them have to be a little bit shorter. Yep. What the heck? How's it cut? Cuts great. Super. Come on, Trav, haul around. Good boy.
This program is available for purchase. To order your copy, please call 319-362-3027 or visit www.ruralheritage.com. Rural Heritage is a bi-monthly magazine dedicated to draft animal farming and logging, as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. It is published by Mishka Press, which also offers a complete line of back-to-the-land books, DVDs, and calendars. Call or write for a catalog or subscription information, or visit our website, www.ruralheritage.com, to shop online.